All right, guys. So so far, we have talked about a couple of things this year. We've talked about um, how to set up experiments, how to design experiments. We're going to practice that all through the year, and we've talked about scientific notation, and we're going to use that whenever it's appropriate through the year when we're dealing with really big numbers or really small numbers. And now I want to talk about uh, how we can tell whether the numbers that we use are reliable. Okay. So the first thing that we need to think about is uh, these two terms called accuracy and precision. You've heard these used before and I want to show you some examples of what I mean by accuracy and precision. If I had somebody shooting uh, a pellet gun at an index card and I, I get something that looks like this. They're sort of spread throughout the index card. The person that was shooting at this was not accurate. They were aiming for the middle so there's no accuracy here and they're also not precise. So what do I mean by precision? Let me show you. Here's an example of somebody who was not accurate because they weren't hitting the middle, but they were precise, meaning that even though they weren't accurately hitting the middle, they did keep all of their shots clustered together. So this is precision. You, if you do an experiment and your numbers are precise but they're not accurate, you can work with that. You can adjust it. You could say, well, let's just move the target up so next time they all hit in the center. But if you have something that is not precise or accurate, you have bad data. You can work with this. What you really want is accuracy and precision. And that's what this is right here. When you can hit in the middle, that's accuracy. And if you keep them all clustered together, that's precision. So our goal when we're doing scientific experiments is to be first precise with our data collection. All right. Second, if we can be accurate as well, then we're doing great. We can deal with a little uh, being a little off in our accuracy because we can adjust, we can recalibrate our instruments, um, but it's best to be able to hit on the target and have them all clustered together. Accuracy and precision in our data collection. So one way we deal with this is figuring out what numbers from the data we've collected are the real important numbers and what numbers are kind of not so important. It sounds kind of weird. Let me give you an example. If I said to you guys, I weigh 150.25379 pounds, one of two things is going to cross your mind. One, either I weighed myself on a very, very scientifically accurate scale, not like a bathroom scale, or two, I'm just making something up, right? Because you know, if I measure myself on a bathroom scale, I would only know just you know the 150 pounds. I might be able to say well I'm 150 and a half pounds because it's right in between those two little uh, uh, little tally marks on the scale. But if I made up a number like of 150.25 blah 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 then I know that I am actually um, either using very very accurate instruments or I'm using numbers, too many numbers than what are considered to be significant. And this introduces a whole concept that we're going to deal with called significant figures or sig figs for short. And what a sig fig is is just kind of setting the bar of what numbers are real and at what point are you sort of becoming uh, a little, are you just making numbers up? At what point are you sort of full of baloney with your numbers? And at what point are they actually close to being the real thing? So I'll give you another example of sig figs here to help you understand what I'm talking about. I'm going to measure the length of a battery. And I'm doing it in, in um, centimeters. So you can see it's one, two, three, a little over four centimeters. And I know it's going to be a little blurry, all these little marks. You have to take my word for it. But it goes two and a half little notches past the four. So I could say the, the length of this is 4.25 centimeters. That's as far as I can go. If I make the number bigger than that, then your sort of baloney detector should be should be making noises because you know that I'm I am officially full of baloney. Uh, if I say something like this is 4.25369210 uh, centimeters long, I just made a whole bunch of numbers that are what we would call insignificant. Meaning that this instrument, this ruler, 
is not accurate enough to measure that far. But it can measure to 4.25. It can go two decimal places in based on the number of notches I have. And that, in essence, is what we mean when we say sig figs or significant figures. How, how many uh, numbers can this ruler accurately measure? If I wanted to measure it with more accuracy, then I would have to get a ruler that had even smaller little tick marks so that I can measure it even more accurately. And that would change my significant figures, the amount of numbers I can go past that decimal spot. All right, now that you have a, a general idea of what I mean when we talk about accuracy and precision and the concept of significant figures, uh, what we're going to do in class is we're going to try that out. I'm going to give you the rules for how we determine sig figs, and, and we'll use it in some examples. And best of all, we'll, we'll answer that problem that all freshmen have of, of when you do a math problem or a science problem, how many decimals do you round to? and sig figs will answer that for us. So we'll be doing that in class, and I'll see you then.